For the first time ever, scientists have managed to localize a single fast radio burst to the outskirts of a massive luminous galaxy some 3.6 billion light years away. This galaxy is similar in size to the Milky Way, so what can this tell us about these mysterious signals? To quickly recap, fast radio bursts are mysterious signals that last a fraction of a second. Most never repeat. They only emit in radio frequency and no other emissions are detected. And some signals have never repeated. They have a very characteristic signature. If we examine a selection of fast radio bursts, we can see that they all have the same general shape. Now, it is thought that these signals are located outside of our galaxy, and this therefore makes the strength of these signals another puzzle. The Electric Universe has a very different view of this, but more on this in a bit. The only other FRB they were able to trace was the well-known repeating FRB. And interestingly enough, the galaxy that they trace back for the repeating one looks very different to the galaxy of this one they have just detected. So the repeating FRB was traced to a young galaxy which was undergoing rapid star formation and was thought to be very low in metal. Now this signal's host galaxy is the opposite. It is a mature galaxy with relatively few newly forming stars. Now this is a huge problem as much of the mainstream had pinned its hopes on star forming regions being the clue to understanding what causes these events. And this means that there may well be different ways to generate these events depending on the environment. This is a problem for the mainstream because it means that they have to create different models depending on the environment that the object is located in. And that is a problem because the signals that they generate are so similar and the characteristics are the same. So having different ways to generate them based on their environment is a huge problem. There are some interesting things to note about fast radio bursts in general. So the first is that most are actually polarized. Some have linear polarization and some have circular polarization. Now this can only happen if they pass through a medium that has a strong magnetic field. For the majority of FRBs, we've also been able to measure something called plasma dispersion. Now, when you listen to these signals, and I know that they're radio, but when you convert the, the signal that we received into sound, what you will hear is what I call a ringing down. So the fact is the frequency starts high and then it moves downwards. Now it is believed that the reason for this is because of this process called plasma dispersion. And this is where the plasma that the signal passes through affects the speed of different frequencies. So higher radio frequencies will arrive before those emitted at lower frequencies. So the lower the frequency effectively, the more that it is slowed down by this plasma. If we examine the main dispersion measure for the FRBs, a really rather interesting pattern starts to appear. And it isn't that it is randomly distributed, which is what you would expect, but these values seem to be grouped into discrete values, almost like they are quantized. And it sort of reminds me of Arp's work when he looked at quasars. And admittedly, this is not the same because he looked at redshift and here we are looking at frequency. But we find values that are grouped together roughly around 260 and again at 560, 720, 780, 950, 1100, 1580 and then 1630. And there are some that fall in between these values and some that sit above the highest value that, that they've got. But when you look at all of them, then the majority fit into or fit very closely to these numbers. Now, this in itself is very odd. 
if this was due to the signal passing through plasma in the vicinity of whatever created it, then obviously through plasma within the galaxy where this thing resides, then interstellar space, and then finally plasma in our own Milky Way before we then finally detect it, you would expect that the distribution, considering that they think that most of these sources are extra galactic, you would expect them to be fairly evenly distributed across the range because some would have to travel through more plasma and some would have to travel through less and some would travel through more interstellar space and some would travel through less interstellar space. There is a big assumption in this and that is the fact that we assume that there is a dispersion effect. We do assume that all the frequencies were produced at the same time but it is possible I suppose that these frequencies were created at different intervals so that there is some electrical phenomena which would generate a burst of energy which would ring down like the signal. I mean at the moment it is more likely that this was all created at once because when we look at most stellar events they, they do tend to create a range of frequencies at the same time. Now of course we are limited to the fact that it is only radio and most stellar things look at the sun generate a range of frequencies so that is unusual in itself but for now i think it is more likely that it is generated at the same time that there is plasma in the way which which affects the dispersion of the signal now obviously they use this dispersion rate to calculate the distance because obviously they're basing it on calculations of how much plasma is in space. Now we already know that we are detecting more and more plasma as we kind of look and as our telescopes improve. So it's a very difficult measure to pin distance on and that's why in the case of this one they they detected the signal and then they looked at what was behind it then uh, looked at the dispersion ran some calculations and then worked out that the likely candidate was this particular galaxy and of course how do they measure the distance of the galaxy well they use redshift and then we're back to this problem with redshift and intrinsic redshift values but for now let's just leave that alone i think the most important thing to to think about is the fact that there is this quantization of the dispersion measure which is very very odd now in the electric universe it is believed that these frbs are not from the remote edge of our universe, but are in fact normal processes that occur within our very own galaxy. And this obviously, if they are within our own galaxy, would make the signal strength much lower and would explain why we detect them within the plane of our galaxy and very few are detected outside of this plane. The hardest thing to explain is the fact that this only produces radio waves and no other frequencies. Now, if you think of radio waves being generated in a simple radio antenna, then it should be obvious that this is caused by the electrons in the aerial being moved backwards and forwards. And this requires very little energy. So could these FRBs be stars or other electrical phenomena that have been removed from the main Birkeland current and have received a short kick, bringing them to life momentarily? Could it be Birkeland currents which are reconnecting to other active currents and in this connection process the electrons at the connection point are momentarily accelerated joining the main stream causing a sort of radio flash. I think the fact that they have different dispersion measures which seem to fall into discrete values holds an important clue about their surrounding environment and their structure. I just don't know at this stage what that is. Now let me know what you think that these things are or particular questions you have about FRBs and I will pick some of the best ideas to discuss at the end of next week's video. Now before I go, if you enjoy my videos and you would like to help me keep creating this type of content, then I've just launched a Patreon page. So the details will be down below in the description. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and that is also down there in the description. As always, be brave, be curious, 
the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.